call upon the Lord using his word, using scripture. I'll read from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 14 through 17 as we get our hearts ready to worship this morning. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away his judgment against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You will fear disaster no more. In that day it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your hands fall limp. The Lord your God is in your midst a victorious warrior. He will exult over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. Amen. Aren't you grateful for that? I will say, most translations will we'll interpret that last verse as saying, he will rejoice over you with loud singing. <laughs> I will tell you, I prefer those translations. But, but regardless, grateful that the Lord looks down on his children and he says, well done. Let's gather our, our hearts and worship through song this morning. If you'll take your hymn sheets or you'll take your hymnals and turn to number 43, singing, this is my father's world. Let's stand together and sing. Remain standing if you would and just welcome those around you to worship. We're so grateful that you are here with us today. Just wave around the room. God bless you if you're with us and joining us by way of television or live stream. What a privilege it is to have you with us in worship today. We are grateful to have you counted among us live and in person. God bless.
It is good to see people visiting. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of San Antonio. We're grateful that we can gather in worship today. So thank you for those of you who could be in the room. And we're grateful for our TV ministry and thankful for all of you who are worshiping on the television with us this morning. It's good that we can worship across the city and across this region together, being on KSAT for 50 years. And what an incredible, uh, incredible work that has been. So we're grateful for that. Yeah, you can praise the Lord for that. Yeah. Amen. I do want to say, if you're a guest uh, in the room, we have these uh, visitor cards that should be on the pew, in the pew back in front of you, and this is how we get to know you. This is how we get to know your name. If you would take one of these and place them in the offering boxes uh, outside at the end of the service, or if you're watching on television and if you want to connect with us, there's a similar kind of card on our website at fbcsa.org slash connect. We would love to hear from you uh, and get to know you as well. I'll say this has been one of those weeks where we have had to be flexible. You know, we're getting, I think we're getting tired of these weeks we have to be flexible and have to call audibles, but this has been a week of audibles. And so I hope today in the midst of the week of audibles that in this time together we can come together and look up and say we love the Lord that we praise Jesus in, in spite of all the other things and all the other moving parts and all the other things that change around us, we can cling to our rock, our Savior, the Christ, because he is unchanging and his way is pure and perfect and holy. And that's why we gather. We gather to worship him and his holy nature. So let's pray together and we'll continue in worship. Our Lord and our King, we come before you today recognizing that you are complete. You are perfection. You hold all things in your hands and you complete all things. And so, Lord, we come before you and we praise your holy name. And, Lord, we ask for your, your strength and your wisdom this morning um, as we push through this pandemic. And, Lord, we pray that you would bring an end to it. Lord, we pray that you would bring complete healing. Lord, that you would uh, bring us through and pull us up and out of this pandemic. Lord, we know that it is only by your hand that we are saved, uh, even from this. And so, Lord, as we come together to worship, we worship you knowing that it's you alone who are our Savior. It's you alone who redeem us and make us whole. And so, for that we sing, for that we pray, for that we come to the Scripture. Uh, we are yours, Father. Your faithful and obedient church. It's in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We continue to worship in the Word now. Hear from Acts, the first chapter, beginning in verse 6. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. And after he said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside him. They also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. Thanks be to God. Let's continue our worship, singing together. Rejoice, ye pure in heart. It's hymn 39. Standing wherever you are, let's sing together.
children, if you come meet me down on the steps, I have a couple, couple of things I want to show you and we're going to talk about. Come on down. Okay, good morning. Yeah, you see what's in there? Yeah, come on down. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, come on down. Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Presbyterian. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. I love those shoes, man. Those are, those are cool. Hey, hey, everybody. Good morning. Come on down. Come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. You're good. You're good. We'll give you time. Come on. Come on. All right. All right. I think we are. Right. Everybody down here. All right. Come in. I, I got something to show you. What, what is this? Anybody? Oh, sure. oh, sure. Yeah, th th yeah, this is a shirt. This is, one, this is one of my shirts I would wear with the suit. That's right. You know, sometimes after church I go eat, and sometimes I make a memory. And I make a memory where I spill ketchup on my shirt. So let me ask you, you if you go, uh, you go eat and you spill something on your shirt, what's the best thing to do? Anybody know? What do you, what, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know. You wash it? What do you do? Yeah. Do, yeah, you clean it up. Yeah, you go ahead and you change, you, you, you take it off before you clean it up, right? Is that what you do? So yeah, you clean it, you take it up. Have any of you ever tried to get a stain out of your own clothes or do your parents do it for you? Yeah. Your, your parents do it, yeah. Has anybody ever tried themselves to get it out? Anyway, yeah, a couple of you, good. Did it go okay? Yeah, it went okay. Well, let me ask you, so this is, this is the cup I usually drink out of uh, most days when I'm here in the office. It has a picture of a top church. Yeah, of our church. That's right. It's right there on there, isn't it? It got stickers on there. So sometimes I put tea in here and it starts to stain. What do you do when you want to clean a cup? You dump it in the washing machine. You put it in the washing machine? Yeah, what a, or not the washing machine, the dishwasher. That's right. What would happen if we put a cup in the washing machine? It would exist in the washing machine. Uh, yeah, the dish, yeah, it would cause all kinds of problems. It would bang around in there. But yeah, I mean, sometimes, or even you get. Yeah, it might, it might break if we did. We had to be real careful what we do with these two. It could clog it, too. That's right. Sometimes I use a brush, right? And I stick a brush down in there and clean it and, and wash it out. That's right. So let me ask you, so what if another thing, what happens if we spilled something on the carpet? What if I brought ketchup in here and spilled ketchup on the carpet? What would we do you then? We need to um, get a steamer up and clean it up. You get a steamer and clean it up? That's a, that's a good idea. That's right. Yeah. Use a squeegee. Those would all be good ideas, right? So I would get some kind of water. I would get some kind of soap, and I'd start scrubbing it off here, and hopefully it would come off, wouldn't it? Yeah. So I say that because I want you to listen real carefully in the sermon today. Today in the sermon, I'm going to talk about getting really, really dirty. In fact, I'm going to tell two stories about getting really muddy and dirty. I want you to listen for what those stories are and how, how it is Jesus Christ who cleanses us. Wait, we're, we're sometimes we're, we're dirty on the outside and we just need to wash it off. But sin makes us dirty on the inside when we mess up and do things we're not supposed to do. And the only person that can clean that and clean us from the inside out is Jesus Christ. Christ. And he comes in and he cleans our life with the Holy Spirit and makes everything right and good and gets rid of every stain because of who he is. Every stain that's on our heart and every stain that's in our mind, Jesus Christ takes care of all of it. Okay, so I want you to listen in the, listen in the sermon for those stories today, okay? All right, let's pray and we'll go. Father, we thank you for your unending love and the sacrifice of your son who washes us clean, makes us pure and holy. And Lord, we are grateful. And Lord, we pray for every one of our children. Lord, we pray that you would build them up and bring them into your holiness and your purity, cleansing them by your blood and by your hand. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. All right, thank y'all. Good job. Good job. Good job. Our reverse text has been rich this week, hasn't it? Have you been reading this week? Good. It's good, Pastor, that you've been reading this week. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hope you've been reading too. Um, hymn 611 is, is such a perfect marriage with our, our text, our reverse text. And I love the way the, the third and fourth verses end. In the world's great trouble, risk yourself for God. Share your rich resources, give and give again. This is a call to action, a call to service, everybody. Hymn 611, let your heart be broken. Let's stand and sing.
Amen. If you would, turn with me to your listening sheet. We're going to read aloud our text for today. It's James 1, verses 19 through 27. So if you would, let us stand and we'll read. This then is the text for today. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness, in humility receive the word implanted which is able to save your souls. But prove yourselves doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was." But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man will be blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless." Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. May God bless the reading of his word. When was the last time you were covered in dirt? There was there ever a moment in your life where you were just, had been poured over with grit and grime, where you just had to run and take a shower? When, when was the last time you were just completely covered in mud? Because I want to tell you, there, there's two different stories from my life I want to share with you that speaks to these moments for me. One of those is back when I was in college, my parents had moved to Arkansas. They live just south of Little Rock now. And a friend there had a farm with some low spots that held water. And where the water would gather was a perfect place to ride four-wheelers. And so with two of us, we would go out on our four-wheelers, and we would play in the mud for hours. And you would, you would come to the end when it was done, and it, it was like we were coated in 30 pounds of chocolate you, you couldn't even see each other. You could only see muddy blobs trying to get back on four-wheelers that we had fallen off of. And then there comes a point, as it is, where you have to go home. And when you have to go home and you can no longer see your shoes because of the mud, you have to come up with a plan to get back into the house. Because if you walk into your mother's living room, leaving a trail of soggy footprints across the carpet, you might not survive. And so, literally, we would stand outside in the yard with water hoses, and we would just spray each other as long as it took for the mud to run off of us and into the grass. James tells us this is what it's like to follow Jesus. Or let me tell you another one. A couple of years ago, some friends and I hiked through the Grand Canyon, And it was as amazing an experience as you think it would be. We hiked about 50 miles in five days in triple-digit heat. And the first day, the first trail, we walked down the South Kaibab Trail. And on that trail, there is no water and there is no shade. And you wouldn't think you would get dirty in the Grand Canyon, at least not like you would on a four-wheeler. But you do, because all day long, you sweat. And with every step that we took, we kicked up dust. So at the end of the day, you're caked in this concoction of perspiration mud, and you have to peel your clothes off yourself. You know, it's remarkable how much dust will go through your shoes, past your socks, and cement itself between your toes. Because, you know, the best part of that day 
At the end of the trail, we ended up at Phantom Ranch, where we put on our bathing suits, and we sat in a creek until dinner. You see, in our text this week, James, in verse 21, tells us this is what it's like to follow Jesus Christ. He says, think about that moment when, when you're covered in mud and you turn the water hose on and you just start spraying. And sort of the joy that comes when you see all of that mud drip off into the grass. That's what it's like to follow Jesus. Or it's, it's like this to follow Jesus when you are just worn completely out from the dust and the heat where the dust has gotten in your teeth and the dust has gotten in your ears and you can no longer walk because of all the dirt that has gotten in between your toes. And you go and you sit in Bright Angel Creek and the frigid water just rushes over your legs and it sweeps every particle downstream. James is grabbing us, and he's saying, this is what it's like to follow Jesus. This is what it looks like to walk with Jesus. In fact, look at verse 21 with me. James chapter 1, verse 24. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness. So what we need to, what we need to focus in on, underline the putting aside. That's where we're going to start with those two words first. This putting aside, we desanitize this word uh, in the transition. Literally, what you need to think of in the putting aside, it, it reads something like this. And where it's normally used in a normal context in the Greek, is that it's, it's taking off clothes. But it's not just taking off clothes. It's taking off clothes that are just caked in dirt. They are just stained from top to bottom. And, and you take it off and you, you say, Set it aside. In fact, we should probably think of it like this. The world is brutally hot, interminably dusty, so that walking through this world, you are going to be beaten up and covered in layers of filth. And what James is telling us, James is saying, Jesus Christ is different. This experience that you get in the world of being beaten and covered in filth is taken care of in the person of Jesus Christ. So if you want to know the way forward, if you want to know the trail that is right, it is in Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is how we come into righteousness. When you follow Jesus Christ, it's like being washed anew and living in clean clothes again. Now, we do have to be careful in James because as you work down through this, especially even chapter 1, as you work down through chapter 1, it's easy for us to read this as we are cleaning ourselves. When it says here, it says, you put, put aside, put aside your muddy clothes, put aside all filthiness. And let, let me stop there for a moment. Even the filthiness, so the putting aside is clothes. That word filthiness, often when it's translated, it, 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 it's very specific. It's, it's talking about the dust that gets into the cracks in your ears. And when it's some of that filthiness, it's, it's saying that all of that that has gotten back in there that you have to wash your ears out with. And saying, even in this world, we're covered in dust from head to toe, and it gets in every crack in our ears, and it stops us from being able to hear. And he's saying, get all of that out. And, and we have to be careful, because when we hear that, when we hear him say, put aside those muddy clothes, clean out your ears, we can think it's us, that I'm trying to clean myself off. But we know it's, it's, like, it's like being in the mud all day. If I'm in, I'm in the mud all day, and, and I, I want to clear my, clean myself off, if I'm using my own hands and I just try to wipe it, it's just going to make it worse. In fact, it just kind of smears it all over my body, gets on my hands so that everything I touch gets dirty, and, and I, can't, I can't get it off by myself. Or if I'm, I'm tired and I'm covered in dust, I, if I just start patting on myself, if I start patting the dust off me, all it does is just makes this cloud of filth that just kind of covers me, and everywhere I go is just blanketed in this dust that I'm carrying around with me. It doesn't make you any cleaner to try to clean yourself. But you know, this is how most people view religion. Most people think of religion as me trying to clean myself, me just sort of scraping the clumps of mud and throwing them down. But that doesn't work. You're never going to be able to get it enough. You're not going to be able to do enough good to find righteousness. You're never going to be able to do enough cleansing of yourself. You're not going to be able to clean your ears out enough to make yourself right before God himself. In fact, if, if we want to be clean and, and know righteousness and perfection in this world, we have to stop. 
We can't do this ourselves. You're not capable of cleansing yourself. In fact, we just make it worse. The harder we try, the worse it gets. The only thing that has ever worked since time began is the living water of Jesus Christ. On some level, we have to walk to the water. We have to come to moments of repentance in our lives. But for our lives to be cleansed from the inside out, we have to stop trying and submit to Jesus Christ. He is the one who brings forgiveness and holiness and moves us forward. You cannot do this on your own. But Jesus Christ will cleanse. He's the one who does all of the cleansing, like a stream at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Jesus surrounds us and washes away every particle of sin caked into every crevice of our bodies. Jesus Christ makes us whole and clean and pure. Now, some of us are walking around in so many layers of mud, we are unrecognizable, can barely even move. But Jesus Christ... The living water will make all things new. He will penetrate through the stain and he will penetrate through the filth and wash it clean and say, you are forgiven. You are made whole by the blood of the lamb. You see, there's going to come a day when the Holy Spirit starts to work on your heart. And the Holy Spirit's going to start to work on your heart about the filth. He's going to start to to work on on your heart about the sin that that has been caked up into your life and into the corners of your mind. And when that comes, when that comes and, and, and you're ready to get rid of the grit and the grime, come to the wellspring that is Jesus Christ and you will see and know how life was meant to be lived. Life was not meant to be lived in mud. Life was not meant to be lived just covered in filth. When we're covered in filth and we're covered in mud, we we fall apart. And some of us are so accustomed to walking around with filthy feet, we don't even know what it's like to be clean in Jesus Christ. You know, it's it's pretty amazing um, down at Phantom Ranch, when you get to the bottom of the canyon, if you walk into the bathroom and look in the mirror, you can tell that you are a different color. Your face doesn't look like it did at the top of the canyon because now you have layers and you have layers upon layers. You start at the top and at the the top you you cover yourself in sunscreen and after you you take the sunscreen then you start walking and you get a a layer of sweat and then you walk for hours and you, you get hit with all of this dust that gets kicked up in your face and your complexion begins to resemble the desert floor. And as you look into that mirror, you can tell it's not you, or that it was you, but it's you covered in a layer of filth. So look down with me at verse 25, James chapter 1, verse 25. But one who looks intently at the perfect law. It's another line I want you to, to note uh, and make note here. One who looks intently at the perfect law. Now, we, we've already we read earlier, and hopefully you heard in Sunday school and throughout the week in Reverse, there, there's this other moment in, in James where he's telling us before about this man who looks in the mirror. And, and look as he goes and looks in the mirror, when he turns away, he forgets. He forgets what he looks like. He forgets who he is. And then we get to 25, and we see this one who looks intently at the perfect law. And this is is what it's like to follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you are looking at the perfect law. And he says, look intently at this law. Don't glance and forget it, but but stare. In fact, that word intently, as you work through the translations of that word, there, there were all these other phrases that went along with it. It says, maybe you need to think about intently like this, where you bend over and you squint. You, you bend over and, and you stare and you linger. You see, this, this is what it means to look intently, to, to bend over and put your glasses on and not let it get out of your eyesight. You see, look, look at the, the perfect law like this. Look at Jesus like this. He says, if you're looking at Jesus, you're, you're looking at perfection. But, but we have to be careful here, too, because he says, because the way he phrases this, what is the perfect law? What is this law that he's talking about? Because we might think, that the perfect law are all of these instructions that we have been given in James chapter 1. We see them, they're good instructions. 
And so we see, he says, he says, bridle your tongue. That's a good, instructive thing. He says, visit widows and orphans. That's a good, instructive thing. He says, stay unstained. That's good and instructive. But, but that's not the perfect law. That's the product of the perfect law. What we see, the perfect law is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ fulfilling the law that had been given in the Old Testament and Jesus Christ being the perfection of it, that Jesus steps forward and we look intently at the gospels, we look intently at the person of Jesus Christ and we experience him. And when we see and experience Jesus, we are looking at perfection. You see, what we need to recognize and be careful with as we work through James, we, we might think that visiting a widow will be our salvation. And though visiting a widow is good, it is not our salvation. We might think if we don't speak, if, we'll, if we're able to hold our tongue, that we'll be saved, that we'll be right. That, that's not going to save you. That, that's not what's going to bring righteousness into your life. Those are products of who Jesus Christ is in your life. Where we come to is a person. What we come to is the holy word of God and Jesus Christ. You see, we, we follow him and we get to see what could be and what should be. See, we fix our eyes on the gospel of Jesus Christ and what the kingdom of God is doing right now before us. Even in this pandemic, you know, one of the blessings of following Jesus Christ is, is watching him so closely that you get to see him and you get to see the reflection of yourself. So let's look at it this way. This is where James is taking us. So on one hand, we have this mirror uh, that we're looking at. On the other hand, we have the person of Jesus Christ that we look at. And hopefully there comes a day when those begin to, to match where we begin to see Jesus Christ in ourselves and, and out of ourselves. But you see, when we watch Jesus Christ closely, and then we look back at ourselves, one of the things that happens is we begin to see grime that we've never noticed before. You see how far that, that we've fallen. And, and the closer you look at Jesus, and the closer you look at yourself in the mirror, you begin to realize the extent to which the filth of this world has sunken into your pores. And what it does is it leads us to further repentance, to fall down on our knees before Jesus and say, you are holy, we are not, and to come before him and know that he is the only way out and the only way we are cleansed is through Jesus Christ. See, James is, is telling us that many people have done this. Many people have, have looked in the mirror. Many people have looked at the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they don't repent. They don't change. They don't care. They, they forget. In fact, they see Jesus, and then they see themselves, and they go on about their business, and, and they just continue to cover themselves in filth. See, when, when you don't follow Jesus, you don't look intently at Jesus Christ and who he is, you start to say mean things. You won't ever listen to the people around you. You won't listen to wisdom. You won't listen to advice. You start to get angry all the time. When, when you're separated from Jesus, these are the sorts of things that happen. You know, and there are people who, who look in, in the mirror and, and they, they see filth in the mirror. They see the kinds of things that clog your pores and cake your face. And some people, some people have the gall to blame the mirror instead of themselves, where they say, this mirror must be bad, or this mirror must be covered in grime instead of myself. There are all kinds of other sins, too. Being apathetic, lazy, ignoring the poor, ignoring the hurting, ignoring orphans, ignoring widows. Th these are all just layers of mud on our lives that, that if we will look carefully, you will see in the mirror and know this is not who you are. This is not who God intended you to be. This is not right. It's not the mirror. It is, it's you that aren't right. It's, it's you that are covered in grime and need to be taken care of. And if you will come to Jesus Christ, this will be rinsed away so that you can be who you were created to be. Remember, you were created by God and for God. You were created to serve and work in his kingdom. And when we're not in his kingdom and we're not in his ways, life just becomes this mess that we can't get out of. You see, th this can be the kind of person you are, who Jesus is, who, who the gospel prepares us to be. This is what God intended, and this is where you will thrive. You weren't made to walk around covered in mud. 
You're not a pig. You're not an alligator. You are a human created for the glory of God. And life becomes ever more difficult the more you walk around in filth of sin. You see, you were made to be in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And life is only going to begin to feel right, and life is only going to begin to make sense when you are near Jesus. If you're not near Jesus, life doesn't work. If you are near Jesus, life flourishes. You see, there are far too many who are off. There are far too many who are covered in filth, even in the church. Because we have forgotten Jesus, we've forgotten who He is, that we were created to be near Him. Remember, that is who you are. You were created to be in and with Jesus. The further you get away from Jesus, the more unrecognizable this life becomes. You see, this life we live is not possible without Jesus. Without Him, you will become ever more burdened into your own grave. But with him, you will be refreshingly clean. You see, that's our prayer for the church this morning. That's our prayer for you this morning. May we find our refreshment in the living water that is Jesus Christ this morning. May he refresh and refine, be our Savior and our Redeemer. Let's pray together. Lord, we know we can't get this filth off of ourselves. We need rushing water out of heaven. And so, Lord, we beg you to pour down rushing water out of heaven onto this body of believers. Lord, would you cleanse us and purify us that we might walk in holiness and be near to you. Father, we know and, and we hear in Scripture that when we're repentant, you forgive. Lord, we, we hear in Scripture when we draw in near to you, you draw in near to us. And Lord, we want to experience that this morning. We want to experience the, the freedom of walking around in your forgiveness, clean and whole. Lord, would you, would you reveal that? And, and Lord, would you bring us to that moment? Lord, we pray that you, you would restore us. Lord, we, we need your restoration in our hearts and in our lives. We need your restoration of our minds. Lord, would you come and restore as only you can restore? Lord, our hands are tired, our feet are weary. Would you come and pick us up and make all things new? Lord, may your spirit come. May your spirit come and heal. Give us that hope that only comes from heaven. It's in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're going to have a time of response now. And we pray that everybody in here will respond to God in some way this morning. There's a number of ways you can. Uh, one of those, there's some responses on your listening sheet. Maybe you could respond in one of those ways. Uh, the altar is open. If you want to come down and kneel and pray, you know, I'll be praying over this side. Pastor Brian's here. He, he'll be praying over this side. Uh, we'll also receive you. If you want to come and talk about accepting Christ or, or being a part of this church, we'll, we'll visit with you right now. We're going to sing together. We're going to worship together. But you take this time and respond faithfully and obediently unto the Lord. So let's stand and let's respond.
It's wonderful. Let me give you a couple of life together moments. There's a couple of things we want you to know. Um, one of those is we are 160. And all year long, we've been celebrating our 160th birthday and, and the great uh, ministry that God has given us here in the last 160 years. And so there's a couple of things you still need to know about that 160th things that we're doing. One of those, the big celebration is October 17th. That's when we normally have our, our annual church picnic. And this year, our annual church picnic is going to be a big birthday celebration. There's some surprises. There's going to be games. There's going to be fun. There's going to be food. And so we hope you'll um, come to that. We want everybody to be there. It's going to be a fun time together. But you do need a ticket. That helps us get the right amount of food purchased. Um, so if you will find a ticket either online or out in Unity Hall, we'll be able to get you one. And that's going to be a wonderful time. Now, also with the 160th, we've also been able to write a new updated church history edition. So, you know, we have uh, various books, including those purple books that you see up there that give you the complete history of the church uh, the last 160 years. And we have a new edition that covers 2001 through 2021. That's much of Don Guthrie's uh, ministry and all of the great things that we were able to accomplish in that time and then into the transition uh, a little bit. So we'd love for you to get a copy of that. You can find those online or out in Unity Hall as well. Now, this evening... Um, we need you to come back. So this evening at 6 o'clock, we're going to have our time for teaching on discipleship. But it's going to be more than time for teaching. There's a couple extra things we want you to experience. One of those, we are going to worship together. So there'll be some time of worship at the beginning. And then also, I'm going to do a mini State of the Church address. And, and talk about some of the things that we see and some of the things that concern us and some of the things that we hope for. And so I'm going to do a, a small state of the church address and then use that to jump into the next se section of time for teaching on discipleship. So it's going to be a good night together. We we'll hope you'll come and be a part of that with us. Also, October 3rd is coming up. We're, we're beginning back with our area fellowships. So before COVID, we would do area fellowships where um, a, four Sundays a year, we would meet in homes across the city and have a meal and have a Bible study and enjoy one another's company in our neighborhoods. And so throughout COVID, we did a little bit of that over Zoom, but we're starting to add some more homes, and we're starting to add um, uh, times of area fellowship in homes, as well as some Zoom opportunities. So area fellowships are going to be back and going. In fact, we've already filmed uh, the Bible study for, for that day. It's, it's going to be a good one, and it's going to point to our, our next uh, reverse uh, study series, so we think that's going to be good. But if you would, register for that uh, online and find the area fellowship that is in your area. That will be good. Then, also October 10th, I want you to be aware of this, if, if you are new to First Baptist, or if, if you're, you're thinking about joining, or if you've just joined, or, or you're new in recent months, we have a class for you. It's called our Discover class, and it goes, uh, it's on Sunday, October 10. It'll begin at 8.30 a.m., and then you, you get the story of this church. You get to hear about our history, our ministries. Um, then uh, we get to have lunch together, and, and I'll get to have lunch with you and some other, other ministers. And then we'll, we'll talk about the things that are coming and, and ways that we minister here and, and um, things that are important to us. And so that's, that's a good time uh, for new people to First Baptist. So if you're new, we'd love for you to sign up for that and get to spend some time together on that day, Sunday, October 10. Now, these altar flowers in front of me, these are given to the glory of God and in grateful celebration of 68 years of marriage for Jean and Nancy Pennington. So praise the Lord for, for them and that example of marriage. That is a beautiful thing. And, and out of that beautiful example of 68 years of marriage, we turn our attention to Pastor Jimmy. So, Pastor Jimmy, come and lead us in our family home dedications. Good morning, church family. Uh, this is an exciting day for us. It, we, we've been praying for these days for a long time uh, with newborns being uh, born and welcoming them and coming into our, our kids ministry and, and coming into the church. And so these are days that we look forward to and that we're excited about. And so today we have uh, five families that are joining us to publicly tell everybody that 
Uh, they are going to raise their kids to know who the Lord is, uh, that they are going to lead their kids to know who Jesus is and to know uh, to follow his example and to lead by example uh, in their home uh, in outside the home and anywhere that they go. And so last week we hosted them and walked through Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9 together and, and, and worked through what that means uh, for the family and what God has called 